Hello and welcome to another video here on Hoosier Hardware. Today I want to look at the upcoming AMD motherboards for their X399 chipset supporting the Threadripper CPUs. Now before I go through some of these motherboards which were largely displayed at Computex this year, I do want to point out that these images will be linked in the description down below in case you want to go to these various websites and check out these pictures for yourself. So first up is the Asus Zenith Extreme. Uh, motherboard. This is an EATX motherboard and a few of the features include obviously some RGB happening on this motherboard with a very neutral overall color scheme that should help it with uh, just sort of aesthetic compatibility with your build. It also features eight DDR4 slots for your RAM featuring quad channel support obviously for that uh, Threadripper processor. Interestingly though, there are no M.2 slots, at least not on the front side of this motherboard. However, there is a DIM.2 slot, which is ASUS giving you the option of inserting a what comes down to a riser card, looks like this, which you can attach to M.2 uh, NVMe drives to if you have them. Now the advantage of putting the card over here is obviously it saves some space on the motherboard itself, which being an EATX layout isn't really that big of a deal because it looks like ASUS actually has plenty of motherboard real estate to work with here. But also those NVMe drives tend to run very hot and by putting them in an upright position it may be easier to get solid airflow over them to cool them. Also worth noting is it appears there are six SATA uh, connectors on this side. Looks like there's a pair of USB 3.0 front panel headers, one right angle header, and one over here on the bottom. There is an included USB 3.1 connector over here on the right side of the motherboard, right below the 24 pin connector. And this motherboard does support two 8 pin EPS connectors from the power supply. So Threadripper obviously is going to take a lot of power and this motherboard does a good job or at least looks like it's going to do a good job of giving it plenty of juice to work with. Oh, and it looks like there's a U.2 connector over here in case anyone actually uses that thing. And for the expansion card support, we have four PCIe by 16 slots, all of which are reinforced slots. So you won't have to worry about your graphics card pulling out the physical connector from the motherboard. We also have one PCIe by four slot as well as a PCIe by one slot. So there is a ton of expansion options available here for this motherboard as expected. Moving over to the ASRock side of things, we have two motherboards, the ASRock Fatality and the ASRock Tai Chi. And really aside from the name and a couple aesthetic differences, they are identical. At least they look like they're gonna be pretty much identical from this point. Now, unlike the ASUS motherboard we just looked at, these are both ATX motherboards. Um, and I'm going to be focused on the Fatality motherboard here. Just keep in mind that the Tai Chi motherboard, at least right now, again, has the exact same feature set listed. Physically, again, we have eight DIMM slots for your RAM. Unlike the ASUS board, we ha actually have three M.2 slots. The first one being below the second PCIe slot, and then the second and third ones being just above the last PCIe slot. For EPS power, we have one 8-pin on the far left side, which is sort of a more traditional location for those. But we also have a 4-pin connector also on the far right and top corner of the board. In addition, we have, again, two uh, USB 3.0 headers for the front panel. One over here just under the 24-pin, and the other one is a right-angle connector at the very bottom of the board. A nice touch is an LED number indicator that sort of can give you error codes. Um, in case something's not working correctly. However, another thing that I do notice is missing from these boards is a USB 3.1 front panel header, which isn't really necessarily essential at this point in time, as most cases still don't have that connectivity on the front panel. However, it would be nice to see that on a board for a brand new chipset in 2017. Now, if you're asking yourself which one of these motherboards you should be going with, uh, right now it looks like pretty much a toss-up. Whichever one looks better to you may be the way to go, especially considering that the ASRock Fatality actually has this one random what looks like uh, red accent here, which I'm not really sure why that exists on a board that otherwise is completely a neutral color scheme. So maybe the Tai Chi actually ends up looking a little bit better in that regard. Oh, wait, I did, I did notice something. Look at this. Look at this. This looks like a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection, and this one says gigabit. So, hey, I found a difference. Good for me. And lastly is our Gigabyte Aorus uh, motherboard for the X399 chipset. 
Once again, we have eight DEM slots for your RAM, which seems to be pretty much standard on X399. Again, this is an ATX motherboard layout, so we don't have to worry about uh, motherboard compatibility for any sort of regular mid-tower chassis. Although it's sort of hard to see in the other picture, we do notice that there is an 8-pin EPS connector with another 4-pin connector as well. This motherboard does feature the USB 3.1 header that was missing from the ASRock boards, at least that looked like they were missing. We also have three M.2 slots again, one of which looks like it has its own heatsink available that may help out with some thermals. It appears that we have eight SATA connectors as well as a whopping five PCIe by 16 slots, all of which look like they are reinforced. So no problem with uh, extra expandability there. And of course we do have another LED indicator here for error codes and that sort of thing. And I do wanna point out, although there is no power going to this motherboard, it does look like there's probably gonna be some RGB happening on this motherboard at least up here in the top left as well as right here in sort of the bottom right corner. Uh, so there's likely gonna be some sort of RGB support that you can control in software to make it sort of match any color scheme of your system. So that's the quick roundup of all the motherboards that I saw in coverage of Computex 2017. But if I did miss some, let me know in the comments down below, link those so that people can check those out as well. Also comment down there and tell me which one of these motherboards you think at least looks like it would be the best fit for you if you were gonna be building a Threadripper based system. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, all those things down below are super helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.